Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Are you feeling charitable? Then smash the subscribe button and the like button. And please do follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Man. And welcome to Tuesday's edition of the DCEU Daily. Flashpoint is the, be the new beginning of the DCEU. That is a fact. We were told this at DC Fandom by Walter Hamada and Jim Lee. This is their new restart. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean we're going to lose things that we love? Are we going to lose the Snyderverse? No, I don't believe that's so. But this is certainly a new beginning because what Flashpoint does it opens the DC Cinematic Universe up to anything. It means that the Arrowverse could be involved with the films and crossover. We've already seen Ezra Miller and Grant Gusting, both of our flashes so far, live action flashes so far, meet up on the TV version of Crisis on Infinite Earths. I expect, as I've said before, to see Grant Gusting in um, the Flashpoint movie starring Ezra, Ezra Miller, Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck. So... It's going to be a big, big cast of DC live action characters. But what I wanted to talk about today is that this is a new beginning for the DC live action cinematic universe. This is big because anyone can be involved in this. Because what's going to happen is, and if you're new to this, and if you're new to DC and superhero movies and TV shows, maybe I should expand the conversation so you actually know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? So... The DC, DC, DC comics is are comic books uh, that are about superheroes who wear capes and tights and lycra and they save people. Sometimes they have superpowers. Sometimes they create their own persona, which creates fear, like Batman. So I'm giving you a starter manual here, right? So basically, we obviously have had many, many TV and movie adaptions of DC Comics characters. So now... We are in a situation where all of these live action worlds, whether it's the Superman, the movie universe, um, Man of Steel, um, Smallville, Arrowverse, um, the DCEU, they are now open to combine together. So how is this possible? It would be like in the 80s, right? If something went nuts and Dallas, Dynasty, the Colbys, Knott's Landing, Falcon Crest, etc., could cross over, right? So if you remember those shows, I'm giving you a good example. So how is this actually possible in the DC um, live action universe? So basically in the Flashpoint graphic comic novel, right, Barry Allen lost his mother. He, he, she was murdered right in front of him as a small boy by another speedster called Reverse Flash. His name, Eubard Form. Now, Eubard was obsessed with Barry and the Flash. Um, he saw the Flash as a hero, but the longer and longer time went on, he became bitter and jealous and grew this hatred. So he came up with this plan to go back in time and kill Barry's mother in front of him. It's something a lot, I don't know exactly, but it's something along those lines, right? So... Barry's father is actually framed, is actually wrongfully imprisoned for his wife's, Barry's mum's, murder, right? So in Flashpoint, Barry decides to go back in time using the speed force. He's so fast he can travel through time and different dimensions. He's that awesome of a superhero character. So he goes back in time, saves his mum's life, stops Eubard Fawn, the reverse Flash. But when what happens is... Without knowing it, inadvertently, he creates a new universe. Have you seen Back to the Future 2 before? In Back to the Future 2, because Marty McFly goes to the future to save his kids, but then he pretty much brings a, a predictor of all the betting results from the future so he can make a few friendly sportsman's bets. But what happens is Old Biff steals it from him, the bully. He, he finds his younger self and basically... There's a new universe being created. It's the same with Flashpoint. So in the Flashpoint universe, Bruce Wayne isn't Batman. Thomas Wayne is. And basically Wonder Woman and Aquaman are not heroes. They are fighting in a war 
which involves Atlantis, the home world Atlantis, and of course the ocean. So Atlantis is the ocean, right? Let's get that straight. Even I'm getting my facts mixed up. Basically, Atlantis is the underground world where Aquaman's from, and obviously for Mascara is where the Amazonians are from. So Wonder Woman's people. So they're at war, and basically Wonder Woman is an evil, war-hungry, bloodthirsty character, and she even kills Mira. So that's the universe that Barry creates in the graphic novel. And so what they're going to do in this Flashpoint movie is, and we don't know if Thomas Wayne is involved, which is Bruce Wayne's father, it's looking like not, but I don't want to put my stamp on it and say that's for real. But at this moment in time, it looks like we've got two Batman. That's the DCEU's current Batman, which is Ben Affleck, as we friendly and um, friendly nicknamed Batfleck, right? He's going to be in this movie. So I would imagine at the beginning of this movie that Batfleck and the rest of the Justice League are with Barry fighting some, uh, probably reverse Flash or something like that. So we see the whole Justice League at the beginning of the movie. And we see this connection between Batfleck and the Flash continue like they set up in Justice League, right? I don't know if that's going to be in the Snyder Cut as well, but we'll, we'll, we'll see about that, right? So basically, Barry goes back, decides to go back in time. Maybe Batfleck says something. If he could go back in time and save his parents, he would. So he goes back in time to save his mum and all hell breaks loose. He, he meets Michael Keaton's 1989 to, uh, 1992 Batman, and he basically they team up. This is an older um, Michael Keaton Batman now. He's very bitter, he's very tired, but Barry convinces him to help him. He reinvigorates the Michael Keaton Batman. I'm just making assumptions here because that's how the Thomas Wayne thing is. So, again. There's going to be lots of interesting parameters here because the Flashpoint Superman is nothing like the Superman we know and love. He wasn't brought up on Smallville. He was discarded. No one, you know, and he, he's very freakishly skinny. A very different version of Superman. Barry's created a very different world here. So his aim is to try and get his speed back and try and create a situation where he can set the world right. Now... The point about Flashpoint is it never, ever gets set right. It never was set right in the TV show. I can't remember the graphic novel exactly. So in the TV show, certain things um, change, right? Little things. So what little things could change within the DCEU? That's kind of immaterial right now. Because what we know, Flashpoint, when, when Barry goes back to save his dead mother, Flashpoint opens up the doorway, the portal, for multiple Earths, because in the DC comics, there are multiple Earths. And by Barry doing Flashpoint to save his mother, he opens up the doorway for people in the DCEU Earth and people from other Earths to travel through to other Earths. The, it, you know, the locked door has opened now. So from the Flashpoint movie over, the movie directed by Andy Machete and starring Ezra Miller, which is coming in 2022, this will change everything. And as I said on the top of the show, this means that with clever CGI, Christopher Reeve's Superman could meet Henry Cavill's Superman or Brandon Ralph's Superman. Brandon Ralph and Henry Cavill could share an adventure. Um, Tom Welling, our Clark Kent Superman from the Smallville Universe, one of my favourite shows of all time, could cross over with these other characters with Affleck's Batman. Um, Justin Hartley's Green, Ar Green Arrow from Smallville could cross over with Stephen Amell's um, Green Arrow from from the Arrowverse, even though he's supposed to be dead now, but nobody dies in Arrowverse, right? So I expect to see him. I also expect a brand new Green Arrow, AK okay, or Oliver Queen. I expect us to meet him eventually and for him to get his movies and cross over and stuff. And so why have they done this? Why are people at Warner Media, AT&T, decided to go down this direction? Well, it all goes back because they created the DCEU led by Christopher Nolan, David Goyer and Zack Snyder um, to, to compete with Disney's MCU. They, were make, they created a very successful franchise and they wanted to do the same thing. They had the DC characters laying dormant. Most attempts were failures. I mean, Superman the movie and Superman 2, big successes. Superman 3, a little bit successful. Superman 4, an absolute embarrassment. 
Green Lantern. But then Keaton's Batman movies were awesome. Um, Batman Forever did okay in the box office. Batman and Robin was a flop. But then we had the Dark Knight trilogy. So it's been up and down for DC live action, whether it's been TV or movies. There hasn't been a consistency like we saw with Fake's MCU. And so we had the DCEU led by Zack Snyder. Now, this is um, this director, which I love, and I love his DCEU movies, and I love the DCEU, I love every movie, even Birds of Prey, there's something good in that. It's a shame about the anti-male kind of commentary, but apart from that, it's a pretty neat film, right? So it's a good franchise. But, unfortunately, Zack Snyder is like Marmot. You either love him and his movies, or you hate him and his movies. So what happened was, these movies were making money, but they didn't make the money that Warner Brothers wanted, and the critical acclaim wasn't there, and the audiences were split down the middle. And we know the whole story, Warner Brothers drove him out, and we know what happened there, and then us fans rose up and made sure that his version of the Justice League will finally be seen next year on HBO Max. A great success story. So this changes everything. So, basically, when you open the doors to the multiverse, these multiple Earths, there's so many Earths in the DC Universe, you literally, Flashpoint could actually have Batfleck in another world that he doesn't belong in, right? Basically, Barry is so powerful, he can create, you know, multiple Flashpoints. When things go wrong, like we saw in the animated movie um, Justice League Dark Apocalypse, in the end, the world was so fucked that Constantine convinced the Flash to create another Flashpoint just to reset the Earth again. And we've had lots of rebirths in the actual DC comics, right? And so this is what's going to be happening now. What the DC live action universe is going to do is use what the comics have been using for year, years. Rebirths, rewrites, but it's not a reboot. The DCEU is still going to exist. And the Flashpoint movie is set in Ground Zero in the DCEU, where Ben Affleck's older, grittier Batman is still Batman. Now, if he's still going to be Batman in the DCEU after that, that's going to be interesting. But with the multiverse strategy, which is what I've been calling it for weeks and months now, you've got another situation here. You don't have to get rid of Snyder's work and say this is not working. Because it's shot, it's obviously working for a lot of us, right? But there's certain people the Snyderverse will never work. So, work for. So you can't have it centrally as the main franchise, as the MCU is, because it doesn't garner enough money for the studio. But what you do is, you let Zack Snyder carry on making his DCEU movies, running that universe, and then you introduce other Earths. By having multiple Earths, you can have a black Superman. And no one can turn around and say, hey, well, Superman's white. doesn't matter, because we've already got Henry Cavill's white Superman. So you can, and even in the comics, there's an Elseworld black Superman. And they're just about to write a black Batman. And with the multi-Earth strategy, you can have a black Batman. You can have an Asian Batman. You can do what you want. But it's not just about inclusion and representation, which is also important. But it's always important that you cast the right actors. It's the same with white actors, you know, men, women, anyone. If you don't, if you just cast them because of their backgrounds, then you're not going to get good films and you're not going to get great performances. And the public won't relate to these actors and the way they're performing them, right? It's, it's not rocket science. So representation and inclusion is always important, but you've always got to put the story and the character beats first, right? That's obvious. I don't have to tell you that. So there's an interesting situation here where you can create so many different worlds, so many different Earths. And the magic thing is here that I think they're really going to go back to crossing over. So what happens now is if Patty Jenkins wants to make a self-contained Wonder Woman movie, she can. But if, if AT&T and Warner Media say to Andrews Machete, right, listen, you know, your movie is literally the brand new beginning for the DC live action universe. And we want to see crossovers upon crossovers. We want Keaton's Batman, right? We want Affleck's Batman. We want Ralph's Superman. Anything's possible. We, we want Ray Fisher's Cyborg. We want it all. We want crossovers here. We want a massive movie here 
to introduce the new way we are going to do things. This is going to be the new way. You're going to get crossovers. Because comic book fans love crossovers. They love seeing characters that haven't stood together before meeting. So instead of having one franchise like the MCU do, but by the way, the MCU are introducing the multiverse strategy as well through Doctor Strange. And I do expect an announcement of Tobey Maguire's Batman being involved in that film, seeing that Sam Raimi's directing um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So they're introducing the multiverse as well. But the DC multiverse is so famous within comic book readers. And it's just a good strategy. This is what they should have done from the beginning. So the Flashpoint movie is the new beginning that we should have had in place from the beginning. Because it was obvious from Man of Steel that the people who loved these things were split down the middle. It was obvious since the release of Superman Returns that audiences were split with that film too. So at the end of the day, you create multiple Earths, you, multiple Supermen, Spatmen, new characters, Plastic Man, whoever you want, multiple versions of Harley, different versions of the Joker. We've already got two versions of the Joker in the past five years, right? So it's very, very exciting. And Flashpoint is a very exciting strategy and beginning for the DC live action universe. And I am so, so here for it. And so if you're a Snyder fan like me, you can have Snyder's universe. I mean, uh, I, I was watching a video on, on a YouTube channel saying um, actually that when Zach went on the, um, and it was it the Real Anarchy podcast, they asked him if he will be making more DC movies. And he says, smack the wood or whatever he said. So it looks like a confidence from Zack that he's back for good, which is good for me. But I'm not just a Zack Snyder fan. I'm not just a fan of the Snyderverse. I am predominantly a DC fan and especially a Superman fan. And you all know that about me. So the future is bright where we can have Snyder stuff, which is beautiful. We can have Todd Phillips Joker. We can have David Ayer's Joker maybe on the streaming service series. The potential is now limitless. And I'm so excited where these multiple filmmakers can make multiple films from multiple Earths. It's a very, very exciting platform. And the excitement started for me when I saw Ezra Miller's Flash meet Grant Gusting's Flash. That was very exciting for me and many fans. And I knew then we were going to get the Snyder Cut. I knew then that the multiverse strategy was in place. But are you as pumped as me? Comment down below. Like, share and subscribe and I'll be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. See you again soon.